Hi, this is Marilyn Gigliotti, and lots of you may know me because maybe you're a Kevin Smith fan, but I play Veronica in Clerks 1 and 3. But you are watching us on FaceTime with Todd Wharton. Yo, it's Mix 718, your new favorite rock star, and you're tuned in to FaceTime with Todd Wharton. From Times Square in New York City, it's FaceTime with Todd Wharton. With special guest, Marilyn Gigliotti. And musical guest, Mix 718. And now, here's your host, Todd Wharton. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of FaceTime with Todd Wharton. I'm your man, your host, Todd Wharton. Now, before we get to the show, let's get to this late-breaking news. In Topeka, Kansas, a twister has just hit ground. And Robin Streeter, news correspondent, is out there now. Let's get to Robin with the Robin Report. Hey, Todd. Hey, everybody. Hey, what's going on, Robin? Hey, listen, me and the guys in the studio right now are real worried about you. We know that there's breaking news that a twister has just touched ground in your hometown. Tell us about it, man. Well, I don't want anybody to worry about me because, <laughs> trust, I'm good. But uh, there is a tornado that touched down in Topeka, Kansas, and judging by the girth and appearance, I'm going to call this the one-eyed tornado. Uh, you know what? I've never seen a tornado look like that. So, you know, kudos to you on the name. But, you know, what? how big is this one-eyed tornado? Well, judging with just my eyes. I'm going to call this a Category 5 on, uh, you know, the Dictor scale. Wait, hold on, hold on. You just said Dictor scale. I didn't mean to interrupt, but don't you mean Richter scale? <laughs> Not from where I was kneeling. And you know what? A tornado of this magnitude has been known for tearing down houses, sorority houses, <laughs> and those frat houses, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, uh, maybe it's we're, we're having difficulty hearing, but wait, did you just say magnitude? Because don't you mean magnitude? Oh, no, honey. I said magnitude for a reason because it's all man, darling. And all I know is when this bad boy touches ground, U.S. is about to be torn up from the floor up. Wait, don't you mean your house is about to be torn up? <laughs> tomatoes, tomatoes. And listen, Todd, my advice to everyone is, if this beautiful weather anomaly comes to your house, I suggest you get down in that crouch position and pray to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! It's hot in here. Back to you, Todd. Guys, we're going to have a great show for you tonight. Actor Marilyn Gigliotti is going to be in the house. And then later on, my man, hip hop artist, gonna be performing his new hit song, Wasted. Mix 718 gonna be in the house. So, guys, stick around, and we'll be right back after these messages. Today's time with Todd Wharton is brought to you by Grumpy Old Women Tweets, the Mother's Day edition. So welcome to the Mother's Day edition of FaceTime with Todd Warden. And I couldn't think of anything more fitting than Grumpy Old Women Mother's Day Tweets. So I miss the days when men used to whistle and stare at my ass. Nowadays, all I hear is sand, because that's my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever noticed that all moms say they have the cutest baby ever? Just once, I would love to hear one be honest and say, damn, that's the Antichrist. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing new moms always say their baby is such a good baby. Just once, I would love to hear a mom be like, yeah, no, my baby's a real kid. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love being a mom. It's the greatest gift ever. But there are some days the evil part of me wants to say to my kids, look at what you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna put up with this shit. <laughs> so welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is famously known for her roles in Clerks 1 and Clerks 3, directed by Hollywood director Kevin Smith. Now we got a clip to show you, and I think you guys are going to love it, but I do have to say, viewer discretion is advised. Check it out. 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. In a row? 
Hey, where you going? Hey, listen, jerk, until today, you never even knew how many guys I slept with because you never even bothered to ask. Then you act all nonchalant about fucking 12 different girls. Well, I never had sex with 12 different guys. No, but you sucked enough dick. Yeah, I went down on a few guys. A few? And one of those guys was you, the last one I might add, which, if you're too stupid to comprehend, means that I've been faithful to you since we met. All the other guys I went with before I met you. So if you want to have a complex about it, go ahead. But don't look at me like I'm the town whore because you were plenty busy yourself before you met me. Well, why did you have to suck their dick? I mean, why couldn't you sleep with them like any other decent person? Because going down isn't a big deal. I used to like a guy we'd make out, and sooner or later I'd go down on him. But I only had sex with the guys I loved. I feel sick. I love you. Don't feel sick. Every time I kiss you, I'm going to taste 36 other guys. <sighs> I'm going to school. Maybe later you'll be a bit more rational. <laughs> I'm 37. I just Goodbye, can't... Dante. <laughs> Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way to the parking lot. Hey, hey, you, get back here. Please welcome to the show my girl, Marilyn Gigliotti. Marilyn, how are you doing today? Hi. Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. What was that, a protein shake that you're drinking right now? Yeah, it's just water. <laughs> I have to ask, you're in L.A., so it, it used to be like the standard thing, water or coffee on interviews. Now it's kind of like, you know, no, we do matcha and... All this like good stuff and organic stuff when we do interviews. I'm not that fancy. <laughs> Either am I. I'm not gonna plug it, but I will. I'm drinking a coffee out of a seven eleven cup because it's like a dollar fifty refill. So I am not, you know, I'm not I'm not all about that. So that's how we do it. <laughs> um so Marilyn, let's dive right into it. Um if you guys don't know, um I actually met Marilyn recently. Uh, and I knew who you were, but if you got to know me, I'm not one of these people that jump right the gun when I meet you because I'm, I actually like to get to know people that have nothing to do with what they did, right? Because it becomes a real conversation. And I don't think you right. knew, I knew that I did. And I never asked you once because it's like, you know what? There's a time and a place for everything. And we were at an Oscar screening party drinking and eating so much food and me and you had a great conversation it was so great to really talk to you that day seriously thank you yeah no i did not know that you had any idea and it's funny um because we, we were just having the conversation you know with with someone else and at a certain point it did come up and and I don't like usually people will ask me, oh, you're an actor. It's like, oh, what do you do? It's like, well, you know, I kind of like, you know, do it in a way that it's, oh, well, you know, I just I was in a film. You know, you might know it. <laughs> it's like, I don't I'm just like, oh, I don't I don't I don't um, I almost want to say take ownership of it yeah. because in, in it's like in one respect, I should take. I should very well take ownership of it, but in another respect, I I I don't want to poo poo it either, right. because you know energy. I don't know if you're in. You know, I'm into what you put out, you get in return, and all that kind of stuff. And energy wise, and so you know, I I I don't want to disrespect what I did because I have to own it. You know, because I feel like in many many a Ever since I moved out here to California in the very beginning, I and people would say, it's like, oh, you're a movie star. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And I feel like that kind of had a certain amount of detriment to advancing. Yeah, I feel I um, I'll be honest with you. Thank you for saying that. I 100 percent, actually 110 percent agree with that, because you know how people use the word legend and they put it on everybody. You're a legend. You're a legend. You're a legend. And it's like, what the hell is a legend, right? Because a legend to me, right, was somebody who had this amazing career, was a mentor, you know, was a father, was a family member, was a mother, had amazing roles or great music or wrote like 20 books that were like New York Times bestsellers and had a career of it, right? And then you have amazing actors all over the world. And then you have your movie stars, right? Like a Denzel or a Mel Street. But it does not knock the reputation of anybody else in the Academy because you all do earn your rights to get your card. And if you yeah. really think about it, 
the majority of the movies that are out there are much better when the co-stars are as good as the stars because it makes yes. the film, right? Um, I agree with you 100%. And I'm not going to throw my name out there, but because I interview a lot of celebrities and you see, I get people come up, oh, Todd, you're a celebrity. No, listen, let's, let's cut the check. I'm not even close to that. I interview celebrities, but right now I'm a businessman trying to be the next me for a new show. And people are like, don't downgrade. I'm like, I'm not downgrading myself. Because the minute yeah. you upgrade your ego and people see that on TV, they may not want to hire Marilyn Gigliotti because Marilyn's building her britches to where she wants to be. But by her saying, I am an actor, I am known in Hollywood, I'm very talented, look at my work, you're probably going to get more work and work with bigger stars to one day you are that big star that everybody claims we are. And then you can claim it and then get the big check at the same time. Right. Um, Absolutely preach. <laughs> um, yeah. I know. I, I totally agree with that because there's such a fine line between celebrity now and what used to really be celebrity. And um, I, I feel like, the word celebrity is being labeled a little too easily these days. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but yeah, I, 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 you know, I still want to earn that title mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I am better known of who I am, but I still feel like I need to earn that title. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I think me and all my fans, just by talking to you in this brief moment, forget about the title at the moment. You've already earned our respect um, because this is how you move in the industry. You work hard. You're honest to yourself and to your fans. You keep doing what you're doing. You show up at places, keep keeping yourself relevant, which is what you're doing. We're going to get into that. And then you obviously have a plethora of so many great people that are around you. I mean, you were in a cult film called Clerks, right? Uh, 1994, I believe. Kevin Smith wrote a comic series, created a movie. You got one of the main characters, so you were a star, so people don't get that twisted. People get the co-star and star. You were a starring role, because I think there were six mm -hmm. to seven of them, right? A lot of people get that twisted. And because it did yeah. so well, cult films did a lot better back in the 90s than they do today. Um you know, Great. that's why the Seattle sound of uh, grunge and all those movies were doing really well, because I think the underground was at its decade during the 90s. And that's why I think cult films did really well, because soundtracks did also great as well. Um, yeah. And now you got to do three. And but you have great people around you. Kevin Smith. Right. You have uh, Rosario Dawson, who's in uh, Clerk Street. And then Jay and Silent Bob characters and everybody who is in there. And when you keep close with a lot of these people, if one of them gets into a bigger film, a lot of times like an Adam Sandler, they may be like, hey, I have the perfect character for that. Let me call her. Uh, do you feel building relationships with a lot of your co-stars back in the day is a huge impact on your survival right now in the future in Hollywood? Um, You know, to, I mean, the I feel like to some degree, yes, but um, it's all about networking when you're out here and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know that that has actually happened for me either. Right. Um, you know, for the grace of God, you know, or by the grace of God, it's like Kevin did have bring me back and have me for Clerks 3 and... Um, you know, is so many people will ask, well, why weren't you in two? And I'm like, I, you know, you're asking the wrong person, <laughs> you know. Um, so many people don't understand what it means to be an actor. It's like, I, I look to be hired. I don't, the only time that I have the, the way of being in something by my own hand or if you want to call it that is if i'm a producer on it um but you know the, the person to ask why i was in it too would be kevin yeah. and 
I, uh, the one thing that I always say though, is like, I've known plenty of writers that don't know where the script is going until it actually goes there. Right. Um, and, and a per- perfect example of that is a uh, writer, director, and wears all, all hats is someone that I've worked with um, by the name of Neil Johnson. Mm-hmm. I was in three, four, five, five films. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I remember him calling him, calling me one time and saying, it's like, Marilyn, I started writing this new script for this. And it's like, I had no idea that I would be bringing this character back, but it's like, I, I brought your character from this back. And it's like, would you want to do it in this? And I was like, absolutely. Of course I would. Um, so that's kind of a, a good example that I use. And so thank God, you know, and I, I don't know whether Kevin had the thought of bringing me back, but then again, being that it was kind of, there was recreations of the original, I guess he would have had to have brought me back for Clerks 3, but but the original script was not what turned out to be in Clerks 3 this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... Even the original Clerks 3 script did initially have me in it because Brian told me that I was, but I never saw the script. And then um, when they had the Clerks 3 reading, staged reading for the First Avenue Playhouse, um, and I flew myself out there so that I can be part of the reading and, you know, always, always network. (laughs) Um, I was reading through the script to find Veronica and I'm like, there's Veronica. <laughs> like, where is she? And Brian's like, she's not in there. I'm like, nope. <laughs> and and I'm asking around. And so so it turns out that Veronica wound up being cut out <laughs> of the script eventually. Oh. Um so 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 yeah thankfully that original clerks three script was not made um but i was told the storyline and and um like part of what the storyline was and and it was it was a fun piece but but yeah it's uh, such a different thing but i i don't even remember where we were going with this (laughs) no no i'm loving it and i'm actually glad you answered it like that i was doing this on purpose to lead you in to get your perspective because i know it was not related to everybody you met because i've seen you work and i've seen you network just by me and you talking alone um i wanted you to answer that directly and you did perfectly so and you're so passionate about acting sometimes we go on tangents and we forget where we <laughs> came from that question i if you ask gloria and if you guys don't know gloria gary was a friend of mine that's how we met gloria will tell you i go on tangents like a mother like, I'll start out where, damn, this is a great sandwich. And then for some reason, I'm talking about the Cold War. She's like, I just wanted to know if you want a tomato on the corn sandwich. That's it. I don't know how the hell we got into this right now. This is crazy. And, and <laughs> speaking of that, um, I love, like you said, your networking. Now, one of, there's a few things that you've been doing I've been noticing, because I went to a couple of them my first time in L.A., uh, the FYC events which is for your consideration um that is a perfect example of what you're talking about when it comes to networking and uh these events are where there are being uh shows right now that are trying to get into the emmy nod and they invite the entire tv academy whoever gets selected obviously to go and networking is awesome do you find that these events are very credible to networking with the right people and sometimes, you know, you never know, or is it more for the food? Cause I was there for the food, <laughs> Just to be honest with you. <laughs> My friend who invites me to these things as his plus one, or will get me in with someone else's plus one because He is the type of person that knows just about everybody that attends these FYC events. Mm -hmm. Um, and and through him, I've gotten to know some other people, and you know they'll they'll attend the Oscar party that we attended, and that's how we met. Right. And and get to know them a little bit better. I'm I'm going to be right up front. I am terrible at networking, especially when I'm by myself because I am introvert. Oh, an actor, an introvert. I know, crazy. Uh- <laughs> oh, what is this syndrome? 
Um, yeah. You know, and I'm not as bad as I used to be. I'm I'm definitely much much better, but um, it, it's just I'm better communicating with people that that I don't know anything about and it's like we can get into the conversation of like oh hi what do you do because that's usually the first question you ask it's like right. so what do you do at the fyc events you can kind of do that to some degree because it's such a mixture of actors producers uh, be, um people who work behind the scenes and in and, in and, and the offices and all that kind of stuff so yes we're all in the entertainment business but we don't know what type of of what we do in the entertainment business but mm -hmm. but i mean i definitely enjoy it and when i am with someone who is outgoing it's easier to kind of mingle and have a conversation with people um which is you know it's sometimes it's like you either gel or you don't <laughs> mm -hmm. right i agree with you 100 percent. i think we gelled right away Joe. Yeah. Right? Um, I think the question I asked you was because I don't like asking people what you do. I think I asked you what's your passion um in I work. Think, yeah, I think you're right. Something like and the reason why I ask that a lot, um, when you ask somebody that type of question, you get a lot better answers than you do about what you do. But if somebody ever asked me a question that doesn't have to do with the job, I think more people open up about who they really are instead of what they're paying their bills with, right? And me and you, I think, yeah. talk for a good 45 minutes. And I remember the girl we were talking to, um, I think she was like an attorney or something. And then some guy just like came in the middle. And then we kind of all like disperse because that happens all the time. You're in a good combo. And then the guy from the peanut gallery comes in with a drink and just starts talking some crap. And then we all just disperse. And it's like, nice talking to you. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> right? So and you know, it. you're thinking about it now. You're like, yo, he's right. No, it's it's true, and that happens everywhere I go. You know, where 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 either you're having a really great conversation, or you're not. And usually, when you're not, is when that person that you're hoping to come in and interrupt the conversation doesn't come. But when you're ha when you're really in depth into a conversation, then somebody else comes and interrupts it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy. But I will let you know, I had a little personal endeavor into the Oscars. So Damon Elliott, who produced Applause with uh, Diane Warren, I interviewed him three episodes. So I was in the front. Nobody even saw him glory. And I'm like, come on. And then when he lost, I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> you know, I called him up like, dude, I'm so sorry. But hey, man, you're a winner to me. And he hit me up and. What did you think about the Oscars this year? I thought it was pretty great the way they put it all together. I thought Jimmy Kimmel, even though nobody really thought anybody's going to say something about last year's Oscar, I think it was so tasteful on how they did everything, the jokes. What did you think about how they handled it this year? Yeah, no, I definitely thought that they were they were much better than they have been in, in the past. Um, and I'm... You know, I, I didn't want them to harp on what happened last year. Right. So thankfully, it was like, yeah, it was mentioned, but, whoop, you know, it's like, okay, it's gone already. Um, and, it, and it sped along at a nice pace. Yeah. Um, so that was the good part. You know, I, I you know, it, it was good. I enjoyed them. Yeah. You know, I don't. The party was great. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and that's the thing, though, too. It's like being able to, because I. I have no way of watching it at home because I do streaming on everything now. Um, but it's nice to be there with like-minded people that you can talk about it as well and to enjoy it with everybody, you know, and, and just have those comments of when it's really good and when it's really bad and when you have something controversial happening. <laughs> yeah, you know what I loved? It was intimate. Uh, nobody treated others like they were bigger than anybody else. We were all just there having fun. You know, you were there, Gloria, uh, Naomi Grossman from America Horror Story. And I love those settings because we were all just hanging out. And that's the way all these events would be. I mean, there are events me and you go to where it's sometimes it's just like, all right, do they really want to get to know me? Or are they trying to get to know me for the connects I can give them, right? So you don't know if the conversation's going to be real. And um, right. speaking of that, um, you do a lot of Comic-Cons around the country. 
which I think is awesome uh, because, like I said before, Clerks is uh, originally a comic series. When you're at these comic cons, obviously people come up to you, they ask you a lot of questions. Have you had to have somebody request something from you that is so bizarre that you just like, wait, <laughs> did you just ask me to do that? Or anything ever strange? Because, you know, comic people sometimes they're a little wacky because they live inside the comic. So you ever have any of that? I've had, uh, yes, I have had weird. Have I had very weird? I mean, nothing is kind of sticking out at the moment or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I've had the people say, you know, they'll they'll write their own little sign of saying I'm number 38 or, you know, all that. And at this point, it's like I, I've pretty much seen it all. And nothing is kind of sticking out at the moment as far as, you know, like what was like something that made me uncomfortable. Oh, no, it came to me. It came to me. Yes, that's what I want. That's what I want. I'm looking at you I'm like, come on, girl. You know you got one. Um, and it, and it kind of started when we were filming Clerks 3, where a fan was just showing his <laughs> fandom towards me. I'm trying to find the right words because I don't want to be offensive. Is that anyway. a good one? His no, 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 not in that way. It's just like his his adoration towards me, Veronica, I, you know, sometimes it's hard to see whether they really kind of know the difference. Yeah. Um, but then we we were all at a convention and and I saw a post where he was going there and had certain things that he was going to ask and do and whatever. And so he 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 got there and he gave me um these rings. They were Star Wars rings and they were marriage rings. <laughs> and it, there was also uh, his dog tags. <laughs> and um, there was uh, this Dr. Strange medallion, I think it was. Um, I, I was, my my mouth must have hit the floor so hard <laughs> and I didn't know what to 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 take of that because he actually didn't ask me to marry him and he had his kids with him. There were about three or four of them. And I'm just, I'm looking at this and, and, you know, I'm like, well, I said, no, thank you. But you know, here I am. Like I should have just given these back because I didn't want, I didn't want to keep it. Yeah, especially course. the, Tags. The dog tags is something that he, you know, that, that's the special thing. It's like, you know, um, so I just kind of went up to Brian later on and like, I don't know what to do with this. I can't throw this out. I can't throw this out. And so he's like, I'll take him. So thankfully, he, you know, he contacted the guy and, and it's like, it's been <laughs> nice and quiet. I mean, you know, nothing on that. But no, I mean, some guy comes up to you. He's pretty much putting it out there. I got four kids. Instead of giving you one ring, I'm going to give you like four. I rep Dr. Strange. <laughs> I'm a catch. And if you don't know, here are my dog tags. I've killed people. So I think we got something here. I think I think there's something going on. <laughs> Guys who don't know, when she mentioned 38, go on YouTube, type in Man Gigliotic Clerks Snowball. That's all you got to do. Type that in, and you'll understand what she meant by 38. <laughs> And it's one of the coolest, funny scenes. Uh, I think I watched that scene like 12 times. Uh, would I be disturbed by that scene if I found out? <laughs> yeah. But she had a point. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I, 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 guys, just go check it out. Just go, just believe me. Um, how do you like oh, Like that? Like, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to say that was kind of mild in comparison to him actually cheating on her. You know, he, here's someone who who had an ex that cheated on him and he was all hurt about it. And then he just goes and makes this date, you know, without even talking to me first. And then, oh, oh, wait, no, I do love you. I'm so sorry. It's like, ah, yeah, no, come on. <laughs> How many times do you have to do that scene? Because 
I know me when I act because I've been in little things here and there. I'm not, you know, per se an actor, but I would laugh so hard at the time. <laughs> the director would be like, just, just let Todd go. Just let him do his thing. How many times do you have to shoot that? Because that was a pretty fun scene. Well, honestly, because he was shooting on 16 millimeter film and there was, we had to kind of get it right the first time. No scene was done more than maybe twice. That's impressive. Um, we we had to we had to do it that way. Um, now the scene where I am just going off on Dante and just kicking the bottom of his boot, just so yeah, so everybody knows um, the magic of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, we kind of split that scene up a little bit, I, if I'm remembering correctly, because mm -hmm. I it's such a diatribe mm -hmm. of, of dialogue yeah. um, that goes that goes on that mm -hmm. we might have split it so that it was easier to kind of go through. Right. But I can't remember for sure. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's like he did not have film to play with to just say, OK, let's do it again. You know, it's like if it was good enough, it was good enough. Well, I think it was definitely good enough because, you know, going back to what you said about not being two, people forget that a lot of trilogies, a lot of series, a lot of the characters are not in a lot of the series, in a lot of films. So in big films, like a Star Wars and stuff, they don't, they don't have all the characters in it all the time. They bring them back sometimes. Now, what's really impressive is you go from a cult classic, right? Third film, you bring in Rosario Dawson, very well-known actress, and your budget, I believe, was $7 million. So you go from a cult classic to a $7 million budget. So right there, compliments the work that the first put in, the second, and the third, and you're a part of that. So kudos to you, because you're a part of that whole budget growing. Um, that's why you're in Comic-Con all the time. Now, besides the Comic-Con, you've done a lot of short films, right? Um, I believe in 2022, you had a film that was in a festival, um, the evolved, that a lot of people really enjoy. A Mother's Love, uh, a short film that I directed. So, yeah, well, we actually shot that pre-pandemic. Okay. Um, uh, and there was a group of us that uh, we all got together mm -hmm. so that we can make a series of short films. Um, we had about... I think it was eight short films um, and one that I actually kind of created as well, which is what I was originally supposed to direct. We did a crowdfunding mm -hmm. all in all. We were, we were kind of guessing that we would need about 40, $45,000 to do all eight. Wow, um, you know, and, but we only raised just over $3,000. So we kind of figured it's like, all right, let's try to do three of these eight. And a week before we were set to shoot, I lost my main actor. And so I couldn't find anybody to replace him because I had a specific look mm -hmm. that I wanted. And, um, like he offered up some some uh, suggestions, but I'm like, they ain't gonna be doing it for free. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, they kind of fit the bill, but not exactly. But yeah, I can see that they're not going to do it for for little to no money, um, which because we didn't have anything, um, and so I wound up switching to the other short that I was going to direct anyway because mm -hmm. it spoke to me. And it was written by the lead actor. Mm. Um, and so we did three shorts in three days over a weekend, which is wow. insane. You did three shorts uh, in three days? Yeah. One short each day. And mine had a location change. Ask me if I'd ever do that again. <laughs> no. no. Um but unfortunately, you know, after we finished doing all those three shorts, it's like we we had no money left over for post production. Um, so eventually, little by little, everybody kind of did their own post production for their short film, and uh, it wasn't until the pandemic that we 
the two of the female leads in that who were part of the group and myself kind of got together. It's like, all right, let's try to do this. Um, someone who was kind of in and out and part of the group who's an editor, he said, I'll do it. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. I want to be able to see this. And so, you know, he, this is something that he did on his downtime as an editor. Um, and then, you know, other favors here and there, we were able to finally pull it together. And, um, the nice thing is that we were able to have our premiere at a film festival happen to be Kevin's uh, first year film festival. Um, so that was nice. I, I couldn't be there because I was at a convention at the time, right. but uh, I it seemed to be very well received. Well, that's why I wanted to bring that up. And, um, and I wanted to let a lot of the actors know that passion is... I keep telling people it's a huge word. You just described something that probably happens every single day. Um, budgets for films today are very hard to get. There are billions of crowdfundings out there. Unless you get a good marketing team, um, people right now are tight with money. But if you really love your projects mm -hmm. that you create, you find a way. Um, I believe in that wholeheartedly. Um, I, I don't think I would do three short films in three days, but you did it. And look at what happened. Like Kevin Smith now was one of the premier directors in Hollywood, very well known, right? And you got it to be featured in his festival and you weren't there. But this shows that every time there's a dead end, you lost your lead actor, you find a way. It's it's hard, it's a struggle, but actors mm -hmm. need to hear that from a known actor that no matter how much you love your project, not everybody's going to love it the way you do because you're personally attached to it. So I think people have to get that mindset that no matter how great the project is, guys, if you're not personally attached to it, the people you bring on board always have a hidden agenda. And if they have other <laughs> stuff going on, they may back out, right? And that's what happened to you as you drank your matcha water. <laughs> you know? Just my water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Um, I wanted you to bring that up, and I think it's a great story because it's an inspirational story, and now it's doing pretty well. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's awesome. Congratulations on that. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, I lost my lead actor because basically he was working on a DC film. I'm like, and and he wound up in the hospital. So I was like, yeah, no, that's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, not the DC, but, you know, the hospital it, part, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know... <laughs> You have to find other people that are going to be just as excited about your piece as well, though, because yeah. what someone considers like th that this is a great piece, you know, that it's and it's theirs, it's their baby. So they may be a little biased, <laughs> um, you know, others may not consider it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been plenty of times where, you know, I've been asked to be part of something and they're like, oh, it's, it's this is what it is. And it's like, it's going to be so exciting. And and then I read it and I'm just like, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um, so, you know, you have to find the other people that are going to be just as passionate about your piece as you are. Um, because, hey. Greatness is your own percep perception. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, That's not exactly how I wanted to put it and what I really want to say. But, you know, it's like a, it's a it's like a piece of art. You know, one person's going to hate it and one person's going to love it. Mm -hmm. I agree. With and, you and it's all yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent agree with you. Thank you for bringing that up, because uh, a lot of times when I speak to people like yourself, it's always good to bring up a story that can hit home with everybody else that's watching this interview. Because I don't think people understand that when you are successful in what you're doing and you're still growing, they think that your life is perfect. You know, oh, I did that, I did that. But there is a thing that goes on. Even if you are a movie star like we spoke in the beginning. Those stars go through a lot of trials and tribulations also. Yeah, it's a little easier, but there's a lot of stories they go through that people will not know unless it's asked. So um, thank you for bringing that story up because, you know, you went into the budget. You went into what happened. A lot of people won't talk about that 
I think it's awesome you talked about that because it shows that, hey, guys, I believed in my project. It didn't happen the way I wanted to, but you know what? God damn it, I got it done. And it's, yeah. I love it. And again, that's awesome, Marilyn. Congrats. Yeah, I'd, I'd still like to get the other one done that, that I did kind of put together. It's it, a concept that came to me at one time, and it's really not... <laughs> It's it. There is barely any dialogue. It's as a matter of fact. But um, you know, I know that I would probably have to do a crowdfunding, yeah, thing to get it done, because I personally wouldn't want to do it and not pay anybody that may work on it that I may need to work on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I I just you know I don't feel like the timing is right to be doing a crowdfunding for one. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much I would need, but I know it wouldn't be a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I, I would still hopefully like to, to get it done at some point. All right. Well, if people have any suggestions who may be watching and they want to follow you and hit you up, cause you never know, uh, life is, uh, well, this industry is very small, even though how it's big. What is the best place that people can follow you? Would it be your website, your Instagram? What, what would be the best place for them to uh, see everything that you're doing? I, yeah, I have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, can't look for the blue check marks anymore because they, some of them was taken away. <laughs> yeah, they are. Marilyn, it's been awesome. I could talk to you for a long time. We're definitely going to meet. Yeah, we can continue. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. I know. I wish. But well, we do appreciate you being on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day and hanging out with me. I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's, it's been fun. Yeah, my pleasure. And guys, stick around because coming up next, he's got a new song dropping and he's a rising star in the hip hop world. My man makes 718. So guys, stick around and we'll be right back after these messages. We did it in the 90s, son! I can't catch my breath, man. Really? Should I try mouth stuff? What is this, a Tinder date? Get off of me. Uh, oh, shit. Mr. Dante! I need an ambulance at the quick stop. Saved my life, man. Wish I had a life worth saving. What are you talking about? Sit around and watch the same movies over and over. I always thought you could have made a cool movie. You're right. I'm living on borrowed time. No more watching movies. I'm gonna make a movie! What's the movie going to be about? It's about him working here. Meta. Everything in the script is something either me or someone I know said. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Maybe Jay and Silent Bob could be characters. Jay and Silent Bob are like C-3PO and R2-D2. They've been here since the first movie, which was the last time they were cool. But they've been with the franchise so long, they still give them cameos and put them on the lunchboxes. Snoochie boochies! Please tell me why! They believe in you. Put in that stuff you used to say about the Death Star contractors. Get sued by Disney? No way. Now that's what I call acting! <laughs> Take off your pants! Uh, what the hell is this? I added a scene where you get shot. I'm not letting you kill me off in the third act. What if there's a sequel? A sequel? What am I, a hack? I think it needs more weed. So here to perform his new hit song, Wasted, here's my man, hip-hop artist, Mix 718. Show me what you got. I 
I've been getting wasted Drinking strong, but I still like the way it tasted On the roof, I feel the bounce inside the basement At the fire, breathe it in rotation Like a motivation I've been getting wasted Drinking strong, but I still like the way it tasted On the roof, I feel the bounce inside the basement At the fire, breathe it in rotation Like a motivation Hit me with a twist, stay for the vibe, I ain't here for a wish Can't find a drink that my lips haven't kissed Softly moaning the rim, drowning in love with the liquor I swim Not alcoholic, but I like to binge And even if I'm, I come straight off the hinge And I know I can settle for nothing but everything I could try anything off of enough of the stuff Maybe go throw me a party at six in the morning On top of a memory bus Ugly the word on the other side, so what a tragedy I keep my energy up It's long for bombada, Kuna Matata Electrical downing a Hennessy cup I've been getting wasted Drinking strong, but I still like the way it tasted On the roof, I feel the bounce inside the basement Add the fire, breathe it in rotation Like a motivation I've been getting wasted Drinking strong, but I still like the way it tasted On the roof, I feel the bounce inside the basement Add the fire, breathe it in rotation Like a motivation I came here for that twisted sound I'm in the getting lost, not in the being found And I'm tripping, stumbling on the ground But I ain't got no shame, let's get another round Cause I can't walk straight, but I'm feeling fine At least I didn't try, at least I'm still alive I can feel my face, but I'm walking inside Let's rage it out too far to tell the truth I'm all right So I just want to take a moment to thank my guests for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden, Marilyn Gagliotti, and Make 718. Thank you for making this such a great Mother's Day edition. Now, speaking of Mother's Day, let's get a little serious. I think it's time that we all take a moment and reach out to someone who's a mother, a sister, an aunt, or whatever, and just give them a hug. Tell them how much you love them, because mothers of the world and ladies of the world are pretty precious, and none of us will be here without them. So to everybody around the world, happy Mother's Day from myself and the entire FaceTime with Todd Warden team. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did, and this is for my mom. If you're not living the passionate life, then he's like you living. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.